Hey guys, <laughs> bet you're wondering what the heck that is on camera. This is another video for Art Joy of Sharing. This month we're talking about um, mark making tools. So here's something not a lot of people know about me. I have been and still do collect homemade mark making tools and I have since my first beginning journey into mixed media. And my baskets occasionally need to be purged because I save way too much stuff to make marks with. And then I have no room in the two bins for anything else. We're going to go through some of what's in my bins and we are going to, um, I'm going to share with you some of my favorite things that I have that I've used and um, where I got them, how I acquired them, hopefully to give you some ideas of things that you can save that you maybe even have around the house, things that you think are trash that you can use to make marks with in your work. So let me move one of the baskets or both because we cannot get them both on camera at the same time. <laughs> They are huge. Okay. So here's one thing. Now this I picked up at an art salvage place when I was in North Carolina not long ago. And it still has the tag on the back. I haven't used it yet, but this is a piece of plastic canvas. Um, and this is great to put on a page and then say spray your spray, acrylic sprays through or inks or something like that. It makes a really nice mark. Plus you can put it on your jelly plate, press it into the plate and then take it and and use it, use um, the jelly plate as sort of an ink pad to get paint on here and then put that on your journal page to make a mark. Plus it leaves a nice mark on the jelly plate that you can transfer to paper. So uh, plastic canvas is really great. I don't remember where this came from. Somebody might have sent it to me, but it's the same idea. It's a plasticky canvas kind of material, but it's diamond patterned. This is cardboard. This is cardboard packaging from something that we bought, I don't remember. And I've had some of this for a long time. Here's another piece that I glued to some regular cardboard. You can see this is well loved. These make great marks on paper and journal pages. Can we get that uh, in camera? Yeah, maybe. Oh, okay, let's see. All right. Here's some more plastic canvas. This is what I'm talking about. So I love, you can see this one's very well loved. So I love the plastic canvas. This one happens to be circular, so you get a little bit different shape with it, but it's really great. Um, this is a Martha Stewart brush um, that is, so sometimes you see old dead paintbrushes in here. The brushes are, these are dead, but they're stiff and hard with paint and medium, but they make an interesting mark on the page through the paint. So even your old, say you have a brush that you forgot to wash and it just dried up, it's like a rock. But maybe if you drag it through or scratch it through some wet paint, it's gonna make an interesting mark. Don't throw it away right away. Uh, anything that's round, <laughs> Lit, with lids, <laughs> without lids. This is a old prescription bottle for my dog that passed away. Uh, yeah, this is Bandit, this is Galaprant. Um, and not only does the bottle make good marks, but the lid too, you also can use the bottom or the closed lid to make marks. This is from, I don't remember what, it's from something that we bought, <laughs> but it was just garbage. It was part of the you know, product packaging and it makes an interesting mark. This is a, from the dollar store and this is, I think to clean like your fingernails or something at the sink, but Here's another piece of that cardboard. Um, different kinds of fittings. This is actually a nail art tool from Wish. I think this is a back massager thing, again, from the dollar store. Piece of a silicone pot holder. You don't need the whole thing, so one thing a couple friends of mine and I did was we got some of these silicone pot holders, and then we cut them in halves or in fourths because we really only needed a little piece to make a mark on our jelly plate or our journal page. We didn't need the whole thing, and they come in a number of different patterns. Now you will see a lot of homemade stamps. Before I started uh, manufacturing my own stamps, I made stamps out of craft foam. I got the thick craft foam for the base and then the sticky craft foam to cut the shapes out of. There's a bunch of those in here. This is one that I carved out of um, rubber. There's a bunch of those kind of things in here. More plastic canvas. 
Here's a piece of just plain cardboard, like from a box from Amazon. I peeled away some of the top layer, not all of it, to reveal an interesting texture. Then I could put paint on it and push that on a journal page. It makes an interesting um, textured mark. This is um, <laughs> this is the leftover piece of bolt from a Hobby Lobby um, some kind of trim. I don't remember what kind of trim it was, but when I bought it, I said, can I have the um, bolt? And they said, sure. Do you know why? Can you see why? <laughs> it, again, makes interesting marks. Um, what else do I have in here? This is, I haven't used this yet. This is a base plate for Legos. <laughs> so um, here's another sort of plastic canvasy thing. It's the squares. These are um, non-stick um, like table shelf, table runner shelf things, the non-stick like plasticky fabric you put under stuff so it doesn't slip around. And they make interesting marks. We have a Game of Thrones clue game and when we were putting it together and getting ready to play it, we pulled a bunch of things out of this and I saved it. Wouldn't this be interesting to paint or stencil through? paint or stencil through, paint or spray through. Um, these are from some Christmas lights. Again, they would make interesting marks to spray or paint through or to use on the, any of these could be used on the jelly plate. Here's more of that non-slip stuff. These are some rubber like bookmarks from our local library. They're textured, so they would make interesting marks. Bubble wrap. This is a makeup cleaning thing that you can use to make marks with or clean your paintbrushes. This is a art supply tool that has different teeth on the edges that you can use to scratch through your paint. So it's in here because it's a mark making tool, but you could make this out of hard plastic or cardboard. What's that? <laughs> That's the center to your roll of scotch tape. <laughs> so again, it makes interesting marks. Here's some more of that cardboard. Pipe fittings, nylon shower things, giant chess pieces. Here's one. This is um, these are ice cream lids glued to cardboard. They make it, again interesting mark making tools on jelly plates and stuff. Here's mini rolling pins covered with things like rubber bands, and you can roll them on your jelly plate plate, get them covered in paint, and then roll it on your journal page, and then you can still take your paper to the jelly plate and get an interesting print from this. More of the silicone pot holders. Here's another mini rolly pin covered in bubble wrap. This is from the inside of a um, ball of yarn, the foam. This is from the inside of um, cash register paper. Uh, I was at the store one day and they were changing it out and I said, can I have that plastic thing? Yes, I did actually say that. Here's more of the silicone pot holders. Um, I also have like a jar full of little things here in the bottom, another prescription jar, which in its own makes interesting marks, but then it's filled with things like these plastic washery things that came in product packaging and um, what? Metal washers, there's some, can you see? I don't know if you can see, but there's some tile spacers in there. They all make interesting marks, either on the jelly plate or your journal pages. Okay, what's, the, what's that, do you know? It's the bottom to a cane. So that's what I'm telling you, there's a lot of stuff in here. I don't remember what these are from. They're called sticklets. I don't remember what, what they're actually for, but again, interesting mark making tools. The bottom of a, a flip flop. A plastic placemat, piece of one. More cardboard. This is just cardboard with littler cardboard in between to space them out. And what else do I have in here that might be interesting? Here's an old comb. So the idea is, oh, here we go. That's a hockey puck or ice rink. I don't know. It's a something from the heart sports store. Uh, more pipe fittings, sponges. Here we go. This is one of my favorite tools. I've been using it for years. It's a big giant foam die from dollar the dollar store. 
So my point is you don't need to spend a lot of money to find interesting mark making tools. You can get things inexpensively. You can repurpose and recycle uh, what would otherwise be trash. So look around you and see what you have that's adventurous and interesting that you might be able to make interesting marks with. If you find something new and unique that you think we might all be interested in, leave it in the comments below. Share your favorite thing and let's start a conversation. You can do it here. You can do it in, over an art joy of sharing. We would love to know what your favorite mark making tool is. Maybe put it with picture with it and um, reassure me I'm not the only one with a horde of mark making tools. <laughs> maybe please all right that's it for today i hope that you check out the video description don't forget to like share and subscribe all of the artists in art joining sharing are bringing out videos this month with their favorite mark making tools so don't forget to show them some love support your favorite artists and youtubers as you can most of them will have something in their video description so check it out whether it's patreon a paypal tip jar or something uh, we all would appreciate you doing that and Above all, go out and have a great day. Do something nice for yourself because you deserve it, and we'll see you later. Bye, guys.